a very, very heavy burden for us, for our families, for our homes, for our children, for our churches, for the youth rally, all those kids that's going to be coming. There will be kids at the youth rally that would, had never been to our church and may never probably come to our church. From here, different places, people bring them. There's something about having a, a, a service out in a place like that that you can get some people to come that would never walk in a church door. Happens every year. So, praise God, let's use it. Tonight begins our, our preparation time. And I'm going to preach a, a thought that I've, I've never preached before. I'm, you know, I'm going to wind up preparing us for, the, for these next few days. But uh, I've never preached this sermon titled this. The title is 40 Days and 40 Nights. Look at verse number 17, Exodus 24, 17. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him up into the mount. And Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. That's the title of the message this evening. I've never used that as a title before in all these years. Forty days and forty nights. Man, what a title. What a concept. The great, the great times and period of the Bible are far outshadow and outweigh the, the little famous days we have like July 4th and stuff like that. Uh, little sayings that the Bible has carries much more weight. Now, I'll talk about 40 days and 40 nights a lot tonight, but the number 40 in the Bible many times represents, as you know, Bible numerology, uh, represents probation or a time of testing and sometimes chastisement ending in renewal, revival, or a new beginning. So according to that definition, 40 days and 40 nights usually was a period of time of testing and trial, preparing God's people or someone for something big uh, ahead, such as Jesus fasting 40 days and 40 nights. We'll, we'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, and then began his, his, his public ministry there called the, the apostle, disciples, and, and then began all the miracles and, and stuff like that. Uh, so uh, if, if that's right, and, and, if, and if it could apply to us, we begin tomorrow 40 days and nights to the giant spring youth rally. I believe there is not anywhere that I know of anywhere that I'd rather have take a person that's not saved than the giant spring youth rally at the Burke County Fairground. Not because I'm preaching but because of all the work and preparation and prayer and go, goes into something like that, you, it cannot help but. And, and I know, and I'll say this, uh, beginning, some people's already told, the devil's already fighting, right? And we're just getting good and going. And the devil is fighting. He's hit us, us me personally, us, our family, your family. Uh, I mean, the devil has worked us over lately. Uh, I've seen birds trying to get in my house the other night. They that hadn't happened in a long time. Well, they keep banging their heads up against the, uh, the window. That's a pit. Everything you can see is a picture of something you're saying. Call me crazy if you want to, but I've been seeing it a lot, many, many, many years. And I took the old owl out there and put him out there, and he's a picture of a demon to scare him away, and they went right past him, kept butting their heads up against the windows trying to get in. That just in the last few days. So the Lord, is showing, there's demons. Are you listening to me? There are demons and demonic spirits trying to get in our church. And they're trying any way they can to get in. All they need is an opening. All they need is a door open. And, that, and I ain't talking about them doors. I know about some of us in here tonight allowing the devil uh, to come in. He's going to attack you. Uh, your, your husbands and wives, you're going to have problems and get aggravated. And, and uh, I've, I've never seen it fail yet. I don't think we've ever had a youth rally where we didn't have a good family or two quit church. Uh, it got so good they quit. Uh, and and, uh, and got, Because you know why? I can't take that pressure. 
pressure. There's an extreme amount of pressure when you're in the right kind of church trying to serve God. There's pressure. I mean, it ain't, it ain't a breeze. It ain't a rock concert we're putting on. Uh, this is a, a battle. We're entering into battle for God with our swords and our shield. And it's not a recreation room. It is a fight. And uh, we are entering in tomorrow officially 40 days and 40 nights. After all, it was Noah that God told, he said, get them ready, Noah. 40 days and 40 nights, it's going to rain on the earth. Water fell out of the sky and the fountains of the great deep were opened up and the earth heaved for 40 days and 40 nights before it ever come down. It was Jonah that God told. Uh, there, he said, Jonah, you go preach to Nineveh and tell them, 40 days and Nineveh's going to be overthrown. And the message Jonah preached as he entered into Nineveh in Jonah 3 and verse 4. It was Joshua who sent the spies into the land in Numbers chapter 13 and verse 25. And they went in and searched the land 40 days. And then God said, all right, every day you wasted over there, you're going to wander around a year for each day for a year, 40 years in the wilderness. It was to uh, Ezekiel. In Ezekiel 4 and verse 6, where God told Ezekiel, Lie on your side and bear the iniquity of the children of Judah each year, day for a year, 40 days that Ezekiel laid on his side. It was Elijah who ate the, the, the meat there in 1 Kings 19, 8 and went 40 days in the strength of that, uh, of that one meal that God gave him. But we'll deal with two biblical instances tonight and then give you some practical uh, words, and, and we'll go. We're going to talk about, uh, uh, during that 40 days and 40 nights, a fast. In the Bible, a, a, a leader, a, a, a king, or, or uh, whoever's leading God's people would sometimes declare a fast. Happened over and over and over in the Bible. I'll give you examples of that. And, he said, and, and what happens is, they said, we need God so much, we need the Lord so bad, We've got to have a miracle. Uh, the, the regular stuff won't do. We need help. We need God. We need the Lord to do a miracle. And we are going to fast. It is sad today, as much as the Bible says about fasting, that you never hear it much preached on you. I've had people, oodles of people. Oodles is a Greek word that means very many. And, uh, and uh, they, 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 they text us or write us and they'll say, uh, they'll say, thank you so much. I've never heard a sermon on fasting. I've even heard preachers make fun of people fasting. I have a preacher get up one time. He said, uh, folks, we need to pray and fast. And some other preacher got up and joked and said, yeah, I'll pray you fast. And just made a joke out of it. Like nothing. That's why they're all, that's why our churches are deader than four o'clock and God's power ain't a million miles away from them. I, I want to remind you tonight, uh, this ministry and this stuff that we're in, this is, no, this is not a talent show. This is not Hollywood. This thing has to be done by the power of the Holy Ghost of God Almighty and the Holy Ghost of God Almighty don't work until people prepare themselves and get ready now somebody said this they said brother Danny what does it mean to fast the biblical and medical definition of fasting is an abstaining from physical nourishment food for a certain period of time to seek God's blessings God's deliverance God's power it is not to show off uh, you know, the Lord told them there, uh, when you fast, not if, when you fast, he said, don't be as the hypocrites. Don't, it's nothing to brag about. It, you don't go to work and say, oh, I'm fasting today. Every, you know, it's, it's something between you and the Lord. It's totally between you and God. You don't have to tell nobody. You shouldn't even tell nobody. Uh, if, uh, uh, sometimes you have to, and, and I'm going to proclaim it publicly here tonight and there's nothing wrong with that they, they did this in the Bible but it's not something that you go around and, and brag about so it is an abstaining from physical nourishment it is saying this it is saying uh, boy that food looks good but I want God move and his power more than I want that food push the plate back put that time in prayer and in fasting it is not a hunger strike. 
Prayer is not just saying like, all right, we ain't going to eat till you do what we want you to do. No, that's the wrong attitude completely. He already wants to do it. He wants to pour out his power. He wants to send revival. How many of y'all believe that it would please the Lord to send a great revival to America? Of course it would. I mean, anybody with any sense knows that. It is not his will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Of course it's God's will to send a mighty move. You know what God wants? Some people who are willing and able to receive the blessings and the power of God. And so tonight, uh, that's what a fast is, basically. Uh, there are all kinds of uh, physical benefits to fasting. All kinds of them. Uh, the, there are numbers of fasts in the Bible. There, most commonly, is a one-day fast. There is a three-day fast in the Bible, like Esther. And, excuse me, a seven-day fast, a 21-day fast, as Daniel. And then, of course, the 40-day fast. Now, the 40-day fast that I'm going to talk about tonight, Jesus and Moses, was what we call supernatural. In other words, there's no, there's no way that a person can do without food and water for 40 days. You can food, but not water. Uh, uh, medically speaking, it, it can't be done. You die. And, but that, that's supernatural. Now, uh, I've known, I have known, I have known, uh, Several people, four or five people that have fasted 40 days. I've never done that, but I, I, know, I have known people who have. I have a preacher friend of mine in California. I have a preacher friend of mine in Montana. I, have, I know people around here, three or four that, that were in our own church right here that fasted an entire 40 days. And uh, the physical benefits of that, and I'm not saying you should do that. You better, uh, you better really be read between you and God if you do that. Because there's some people, uh, there's some people fasting. I think one lady in New York has already went like two or three weeks fasting for our youth rally up in New York. Never even been here. And then there's other ones up in uh, Ohio and different places uh, that will be fasting with us after tonight. And uh, I, I, this man, this one preacher, talking about physical benefits, uh, he said uh, he lost 57 pounds during the last. That's a, that's a quick way to lose 57 pounds. All right, so if you got if you if you'd like to lose weight, most people would. Uh, that's a good way to do it. I would recommend doing that all at once like that. I'll say more about that in a minute. I have another the other preacher up there. He said he said that uh, he got ear infections all the time. He said, I continually had an ear infection. He said, every few months, I'd have to go to the doctor. They'd give me an antibiotic. And he said, uh, I'd get to take a while and clear it up. He said, me and the men got a burden to fast and pray. We started meeting on Saturday night. And he said, we would pray. And he said, we would fast until Sunday night. All that Saturday night, uh, Sunday morning, all day Sunday, and then eat Sunday night. And he said, do you know what? He said, the strangest thing happened. He said, my ears cleared up. He said, the inflammation and all that, uh, it completely, and you know why that is? Because, it, it, because when, when, when you don't eat, uh, all the blood and in your body goes to where whatever's wrong and fixes it instead of using all its time busting up food. Uh, you know, like with a hammer, busting up. Them little guys down in there working with a hammer in your stomach, and they beat this food up. Oh, here comes some more. Boom, 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 boom. Here comes hamburger. Boom, boom, boom. There's, a, Lord, there's a milkshake. Boom, boom. And that's, that's all they can do. I mean, you keep them busy about 10 hours a day. I mean, most, most people, some of you people ain't been hungry since you was two months old. Uh, really, I mean, you, you feel the least little bit. I better go ahead and eat before I get hungry. Uh, that's the way we are. Now, when you don't eat, when you don't eat, them little guys go hunt something else to work on. That's why uh, J. Harold Smith, the famous preacher J. Harold Smith, who wrote that book I've been recommending to y'all. You can still get it. It's not too late. called Fast Your Way to Help. And he said, uh, he said, uh, and he was way up in years, 50-something 50, 50 years old, and he said the first time he fasted, he said, and after that 40 days, he said every blemish on his skin. He didn't have no, no spots on his skin. He said his tongue turned as pink as a little baby. He said it just fix, he said it'll fix everything's wrong with you. Uh, and, uh, stuff like that because uh, that, that is physical. That is strictly physical. That is not why we fast. But that's an added benefit of fasting. Lower your blood pressure. We'll lower your cholesterol. 
guarantee it. Guarantee it will do it. Any medical doctor who's trained right will tell you that uh, that it'll do it. Now, uh, that being said, let's let's talk about that. We're going to talk mainly about a one-day fast tonight. I'm not going to talk about es Esther who went in before the queen, king, and he and they thought they, he was going to have her killed. And she went in there and they said, uh, you, you can't just go walking in the king like this. They'll kill you. Things different back then. And you walked in the king like that, and she went to her maidens and said, look, y'all fast for me. Don't eat nothing. Don't drink nothing. I'm going in. And if I perish, I perish. So her and her friends did not eat or drink for three days and three nights. And buddy, she went in there and God put his hand on them. And yet the same thing happened in Jonah when uh, jo God was going to overthrow Nineveh. He done said that he was. And Jonah said, he didn't say, if you don't repent, God's going to overthrow you. He didn't say that. He said, yet 40 days and Nineveh's going down. And the people of Nineveh heard that and the king declared a fast. He said, don't nobody eat nothing. Everybody get down on your knees. Let's pray. Let's beg God to have mercy on us. He even told the animals. Amen. Hey, it's good for your dog to fast. That's right. Let your cat fast. It ain't going to kill them. Dogs can fast easier than we can. Uh, uh, Lord, my daddy's dogs went a week without uh, so They get lost in the woods, them coon dogs. And, uh, uh, they, but uh, they say, listen, I ain't getting nothing. You ain't either, bud. <laughs> uh, and, and everybody fast. And the Holy Ghost comes down and works. I'm telling you tonight, people, are you listening to me? There's a power. There's a blessing in, in that. I'm, I'm going to tell you something tonight. If, if all our leaders, if President Trump and all the House of Congress and representatives, if every one of them would get down on their knees tonight and cry out to a holy God and say we're not eating, we're going to get back to the old time. There ain't no telling what God would do in America. I'm telling you tonight we can't put your approval on sin and expect God to bless that. So thank God tonight we are headed down the road of fasting and praying and begging God. You say, Brother Danny, I don't want to. Guess what? I don't either. I'll tell you how to fast. I'll tell you how I do it. I've been doing it 30 years. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you how I do it. And, and I'm not saying that to brag. You know, you're supposed to. I don't ever tell nobody in here unless they ask. Everybody always asks me on Wednesday, why is your hand so cold? And I have to tell them. But other than that, I don't tell nobody. And i tell you what you can do. Here's what I do. I have to make up my mind. That's half the battle. Half the battle is making up your mind. The other half is doing it. Did you know a lot of times dreading something is harder than actually doing it? Uh, anything like that, mowing your yard, picking, working around the house, you sit around, oh, I dread that, oh, I dread that. You've been better off just went ahead and done it and saved yourself weeks and months of dread. But I, I have to make up my mind, that's the only way I can do it. If I, if I get up and say, I think I'm going to try to fast today, you can forget it. Because by 12.30, something in here is saying, you going to throw me something down here? Well, I reckon. And I feel just a little bitty tiny hunger pain. Little, not nothing like they feel in them other countries. Little tiny something. Yes, darling, I'll have you something down there in a minute. Grab some, grab some starch. Grab some sugar. We're addicted to food. Our generation is addicted to food. Say amen right there. Especially starch and sugar. Starch and sugar, that pasta, bread. Uh, star, uh, I am, I am. I, love, I mean, I could drink Pepsi's and eat ice cream every seven days a week. But I don't. Do it five. Um, uh, but, uh, uh, I'm telling you, listen, brother, uh, you, your body gets addicted to that. Uh, am I right? If you've got a problem, if you've got a burden, if you've got kids that's not right with God, if you need God to work in your life, or you'd just like to see the Holy Ghost move and people kept out of hell fire and God be real to you again like he was when you first got saved and the fire of God come down, i tell you how to do it. Pray and fast. 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 I remember one year, it was after youth rally up in Marion. Boy, we'd went hard. <whistles> Lord have mercy. I'd go on during on these six weeks. I tell you how I do. You do however God leads you. 
I go from my Tuesday night to Thursday morning. That's all day Friday, Wednesdays and Wednesday night. Other people say, well, I'll go Tuesday night to Wednesday night or 24 hours. However God leads you, there's nothing in the Bible. There's nothing in the Bible that says you have to do it this long or that long or that way. Many times in the Bible, they fasted till evening. Uh, they, said they fasted till evening, and God heard it and honored it. So there's certainly, certainly nothing wrong with that. But during youth rally time, me personally, that's why I do go from Tuesday night to Thursday morning. And you do that for six weeks. And, of course, I do that normally Tuesday night to Wednesday night. I eat after church on Wednesday night. And uh, the, I, I, I told you this before, but, but here's the way it goes. Your flesh will trick you because I never eat breakfast anyway. And the reason I don't, because if I eat breakfast, I'm hungry at 12 o'clock again anyway. So I just skip. And, and you know why they call breakfast break, break fast? You didn't eat nothing all night long, some of you. Some of you are so addicted, you get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and go get a bowl of cereal. You really got problems. You're really an addict. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy, I hit the nerve there, didn't I? Uh, and they're sneaking around so your wife won't know it and got ice cream at 3 o'clock in the morning. Then you wash that bowl and hide it, put it back so she won't know it, right? You, you good for nothing. Uh, uh, listen, I don't eat breakfast. Tomorrow, I'll, I'll eat tonight now. <laughs> I'll eat tonight, Lord willing. And I won't eat nothing again until tomorrow like 12, 30, 1 o'clock. You say, how in the world do you do that? I don't know. I've just got in the habit of it. And uh, I go run. I'm going to go run hard tomorrow morning if it's the Lord's will. And after I leave there, I'll go uh, eat an apple, eat a banana, and then eat some food. And uh, it don't bother me a bit. I go over there to the gym and run two hours. Me and he's got me and Miss Scott, John, my buddy, we play one-on-one -on -one for a while, and I don't even think about food. I look up and it's 15 to 1. Most preachers go play golf on Monday. I take Monday morning, go to the bank, pay bills, stuff like that, go to the gym and run. I do that on Monday morning, usually. If I don't have commitments I have to make. And I don't think a thing about it. 1 o'clock, I'm eating my apple, eating my banana, going to Walmart, get me one of them sandwiches, and a 90, 82 cent bag of potato chips. They got them for 82 cents. And eat that sandwich and bag of potato chips on the way home. That way you're not wasting time in a restaurant. And I go home and make radio programs the rest of the day. That's 12.30. I don't even think about food. On the day I fast, Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock, I'm starving to death. It's mental. It's really mental. Half of it's in your mind. You just think you're hungry. Am I right? Yes, sir. I, you, I know I've done, I've done this for 30-something years. I, oh, gosh, I'm hungry. Because I know I ain't going to get nothing until late tonight. And my stomach says, come on, Denny. My goodness, you can't save the whole world. Nobody else does this. Why do you have to do it? Shut up. You ain't getting nothing. Well, my goodness, you've been doing it all these years, and it ain't done no good. I said, I'm scared. I need God's help. I need God's blessings. I need God's power. I'm not satisfied with the way things are. I'm not happy when it's just comes here. Sure, we have a good crowd. Sure, we have a good time. We have a good fellowship. But I'm not happy with how things are here. And if you are, you're backslid. I want to see the Holy Ghost get so thick in here. You have to get a C&I dog get out like Mays Jackson them used to say. So I'm starving. At 12.30, I think I'm going to die. By 2 o'clock, I'm starving to death. And I think, now yesterday I wasn't hungry until 1 o'clock. Why are you starving at 12? Caught you, didn't I? You wicked flesh. You have to talk to yourself like that. People think you're crazy, but people who think people who don't eat are crazy anyway. And, and I say, look, you're not getting it. So what I have to do, I have to say, no. You ain't getting nothing. Period. Shut up. That's the only way I can do it. And that's, I've done it all these years doing it that way. And you know what I found out? I was telling you about that youth rally in Marion. We fasted and prayed and we fasted and prayed. The fire of God came down. The Holy Ghost moved in. And the next day I went and got on an airplane. I flew to, I think I was going to New York to preach. Youth rally in on Sunday night. I left on Sunday, Monday morning. Left all them guys do all the work. 
and I was on the airplane reading my Bible, trying to get my Bible reading done that morning. It was real early, flew out to Charlotte, I think. And I was over in First Thessalonians, and I was reading in First Thessalonians, and honest to goodness, people, it was like reading a different book. Every word and them verses just reached out and got a hold of me. And I, it, I consumed it. I can't explain it. It was like eating, feasting off the word. I seen things I'd never seen before. I'd read First Thessalonians uh, 50 times at that time and never seen. I'd mark this. Mark every verse. And you know why the Bible's a dull book to many people? Because we're so full of the devil's candy out here in the world. We don't have no appetite for the manna of God that he's given us from heaven. This is the manna. That's what God, you know what them children is when they got back? They said, we don't like, we're tired of this. We want, we want something different. We want the, the world's food. World. And if all you do, if all you do is sit around and watch TV and you watch movies, if you watch Hollywood movies, this, the Bible ain't going to be a real book to you. It's not going to do it because you're eating candy. You're eating candy. But you starve it, flesh. Uh, we have a TV fast at home. Uh, we do a 30-day TV fast. Fast. TV's off, 30 days. And you know that is the worst time of the year for me because that's the basketball player. That's March Madness. Ah! Why couldn't it be some other time? That's the time I want to watch it. And, but I say, nope, the youth rally is more important than March Demons. Amen. Uh, the, youth, uh, the youth rally is more important uh, than a ball game. The youth rally is more important uh, than that. And I love to watch. I love to watch the pro basketball players. I can, I can take college a little bit, but they're, I like to watch the best. And uh, so that's why I like them pros. And boy, them guys are good. I love to watch it. And I say 30 days for the youth rally. Up, up, hey. You know why? That we may give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the Word. And the Word of God gets real. I've heard preachers say, man, I don't see how you come up with something to preach all the time. How do you, I study and I can't get no sermon. Listen, if you get clean and your heart gets right and you get the junk out of you, and you, you, can't, you can't write the sermon titles down fast enough to preach them all. It jumps out at you. It jumps off that page at you. You ever hear a preacher preaching? Every time you hear him preach, he preaches the same thing. He needs praying fast. He needs praying fast. There's plenty of, I'm getting off the subject this, this evening. But listen, brother, it, it made so much sense. It was rich. It was rich. And I done that after praying and fasting. Now, there's two big examples here. I'll give you these, and I'll say a couple things, and we'll go. Moses. Moses took up in the mountain. God gave him ten commandments. Forty days and forty nights, neither ate nor drank. People have asked me, uh, people say, Brother Danny, is it okay just not to eat food and drink juice? Between you and the Lord. The Bible don't say, the Bible don't say uh, you could drink, uh, you could drink, uh, juice or, or iced tea or whatever, I, uh, like Brother Wayne drinks Diet Cokes and uh, stuff like that, I, that's between you and the Lord, I'm not saying that would be wrong, usually when you really, really fast, it's just water, usually, Biblical, biblically, it is just water, now, I would not say it's okay to drink a milkshake so thick <laughs> that you have to spoon it in, I, I think that would qualify as a meal. Amen. So I, I, that might be fudging a little bit. No pun intended. Uh, but, uh, man, I had one last night, buddy. I had one last night. Double chocolate. I had double chocolate. Oh, shut up. Here I am talking about fast. Uh, the, the double chocolate from Walmart, chocolate with chocolate in it, or like the real dark chocolate moose tracks, and then put it in a bowl, and then put Hershey's syrup on top of that. That's what an addict I am, brother. And brother, then I, I put a little milk in there and mix it up. Oh, Lord have mercy. That'll make your tongue slap your brains out. And I'm telling you, uh, it, it's good. I'd, I'd rather have that than a starch has steak. But if you, put a, if you put a thick chocolate milkshake with chocolate chip cookies mixed in it, oh, right here, and a T-bone steak right there, I'd eat both of them. All right, <laughs> let's move on. But Moses did not eat nothing. Now, if you're going to fast a long time, you've got to prepare yourself. 
and the way to prepare yourself is not, all right, I'm going to fast tomorrow, so I'm going to bless God, Golden Corral, and eat four plates. That is not the way to prepare yourself because what that does is it stretches your stomach, and your stomach gets real big. Guess what? It'll be gone tomorrow, and it's going to want it again. You're better off to go easy a day or two and get yourself ready before you fast, and it's not so hard. I'm telling you, I've, I've tried it every way. I've done it both. I've been back so I've got to fast tomorrow. I'm going to AJ's tonight and, 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 and cram it in, brother, and it don't last. It don't matter what you eat. It's gone by tomorrow at lunchtime. Moses went. When he come back down, he had those Ten Commandments. That's supernatural. Person can't do that on their own. And then the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me ask you a question. Why did Jesus fast? Was he wrestling with some sin? No. Was he trying to get the victory over sin? Absolutely not. Was he trying to get God to hear him? Are you kidding me? I, the only reason I know he fasted is he put himself in subjection as a man, as a human. He went through all the things that we go through as a human and subjected himself to what we need to do as him and to set an example for us. And that's why the Lord fasted. He was 40 days. It was 40 days that he was seen of them after the resurrection before he went back to heaven and then 10 days to Pentecost there's something about that 40 day years ago they used to have what they call quitting meetings they didn't call them revivals they called them quitting meetings the old timey preachers up and around, hey we're going to have a quitting meet and the whole thing was quit everything you're doing wrong and this and quit this and this and quit that one old woman come to the altar one time they said what are you quitting what have you been doing she said I ain't been doing nothing but I'm going to quit that amen that's good that's a good idea there's one old guy, they said, he asked the Lord, he said, fill me up, Lord. And the next week they'd come, he'd come to all of them and say, fill me up, Lord. And then next week he'd come and he'd say, fill me up, Lord. Some old sister over here hollered out and said, Lord, I, w I wouldn't do it, he leaks. <laughs> <laughs> he asked the Lord to fill him up every week or two. He's leaking out. Now, now the truth is we leak, don't we? We do, we leak, brother. God will fill us up. Woo, we'll go out of here. We ain't never going to sin again when we walk out that door. You ever felt like that? I'll never sin again. And for some reason, by, by tomorrow morning, you're full of the devil. You didn't do nothing wicked. You didn't watch nothing bad. And it's in you. That sin's in us. And you have to keep it beat down. Jesus said the disciples of John, they told the disciples of John, fast often. Paul told them in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 6, uh, that, uh, that when you fast, Jesus said, 1 Corinthians 7, 5, told husbands and wives, when you're having problems or a need, fast. We well, said, not against counseling, fasting and praying, do more than every counselor in the world, and seeking God, saying, God, Brother Mike's hitting on it this morning. A husband loves his wife like Christ loves the church, and a wife reverence her husband, that would take care of your problems right there. If everybody do that. Now, it don't work with just one of them doing it. They're, they're, both got to do their part. And the way to do that is pray and fast. Pray, God, make me the man I ought to be. God, make me the woman I ought to be. It ain't them, it's me. It ain't them, it's me. Work on it. 1 Corinthians 7, it said, abstain from physical, the, the husband and wife physically, that you might give yourself to fasting and after that come together again so the devil don't tempt you. You know that scripture. In 2 Corinthians eleven twenty-seven, 27, Paul, New Testament, said in fastings often. I've heard people say, oh, that's Old Testament Jews. Paul wasn't, and 2 Corinthians ain't Old Testament Jews. And he said, I fast often. I think, I think, that if you don't fast, you get so used to food that it just, that's why you have to have more and more spicy, more and more, you, nothing, don't, you ain't got no taste no more. Because all you do is eat. And I've given you this illustration for years. Husband and wife riding down the road, 
We're going out to eat tonight. Where you want to go? I don't know. Well, there's a Chinese place. No. How about this Japanese? No. I ain't in the mood for that. Well, you want to go to the seafood? I, I don't know. And you ride two or three blocks down, turn around, come back. You ever done that? Right back up the road. Well, well, you decide. No, you decide. Oh, gosh. That drives me crazy. Where do you want to go? You pick. No, you pick. When they say you pick, what they mean is you pick where I want. <laughs> That's what they mean. Just helping you out here a little bit. And if you don't pick where I want, you, you try it. Pick. And they'll say, no. <laughs> That's true. That's true. She'll say, she'll say you pick. And, and I'll say, Golden Corral. She said, I wanted you to pick Cracker Barrel. Well, you told me to pick. Don't say pick if you don't mean pick. Well, I don't like Cracker Barrel. <laughs> you, but, yeah, but anyway, we're going to pray about this. Uh, but anyway, anyway, before I was so rudely interrupted, but anyway, uh, seriously, you gonna, you want any time? No. You want any time? No. Where you want to go? No. Nah. I want to go uh, Mexican, no, Chinese, no, seafood, no, steakhouse, no. I don't know. I don't know. Nothing sounds good. I know what your problem is. You should go home. You should go home. You know what your problem is? You ain't hungry. It's Sunday night. Right now, Sunday night. Don't eat nothing from now until Tuesday. And see how long it takes you to make up your mind what you want. Son, you'll stop at the convenience store. Grab a pack of crackers and a Pepsi Dope. Uh, brother, RC and a Moon Pie, brother. I mean, a Mater Biscuit sounds good. A made, cold Mater Biscuit sounds good if you don't eat nothing from now until Tuesday. Our problem in this country is we're digging our graves with a spoon and a fork. We are. We're eating ourselves to death. And I'm not fussing at y'all. I'm bad as anybody in here. Just because I'm little don't mean, Lord, I'm a hog, man. Ask anybody that knows me. Good night. I just I got worms or something. I don't know. <laughs> the secret is it ain't what how much you eat, it's how long you go before you eat again. That's your secret. But seriously, Paul said in fastings often. There's people from other churches fasting with us. It's not just a body cleanse, it's a soul cleanse. Because after a while, I, I don't. I've had people tell me this. I've never fasted a long time, and I'm. I'm. A, I guess I'm a weak, maybe, maybe a sissy Christian or something. But I, I admire these guys that go a week and two. I, I admire them. I've never done that. I fast regular, but not long. And I've, I've heard people say, "Well, brother Danny, I was praying." And fasting, and it said, I got down to pray, and the most evil, wicked thoughts I've ever had in my life started just coming in my head out of the clear blue. I thought that was supposed to help me. Now, that's demonic spirits. That's why it says we wrestle in prayer. It's a, it's a fight. You start getting down there saying, oh, God, pour out your spirit. You'll have dirty dreams from the, out of the clear blue that you never even, you never, you have, where in the world did that come from? You never even thought of that, whatever it was, and a filthy dream will come in you in the middle of the night. I don't understand that. But I know the Bible said when Jesus fasted at 40 days and he was a hunger, he was hungry, the devil came. The devil came. Before them angels came, the devil came. I said, won't you just kill yourself? Cast yourself off. You have all kinds of crazy thoughts when you're fasting. I've been in revival meetings. 30 years, since 1990, I've been doing this regular. And the day that I fast, I fight the devil all day long. And I think, my goodness, Lord help me, Lord help me. But every time, that night when I get up and start preaching, there's a holy hush that settles over that congregation. And God's power reaches out there and gets this one and that. People get saved, and, and that's because his spirit is beginning to work. I cannot explain that, but I do know for a fact it happens, and it will. I am believing. One hundred, I'm sure as I'm standing here, God's power comes as a result of his people 
praying and fasting and seeking his face. So right now, I'm going to do like I always do. We don't need the seven people, but it sure would be nice to have 50. We're going to take one day a week and fast from now to the youth rally, the 17th. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray right now that you would begin a work at Shining Light Baptist Church that will result on April 17th, 18th, 19th, the Holy Ghost of God coming down and saving souls. We ask you to help us be led by your spirit and to do this right in a way that would honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Here's what we do. I'm going to name off the days of the week. There's five Sundays and six everything else's. So the ones that get Sunday, it would be a hard day, especially since one of them is Easter. But God will honor that. We'll have five Sundays and six everything else. Mondays, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Six of them and five Sundays. If we start tomorrow, uh, I would like to have at least three or four people fasting every day. So if there's a bunch of volunteers for one day, please Let's switch it around a little bit so we won't have, you know, two on one day and ten on another in case somebody falls off the wagon. So uh, let's, I want you to make a commitment. This is not for show. This is not for, all right, everybody see me? This is just so I'll know that we are fasting. Somebody's going to be fasting every day between now and April 17th. All right. Are you ready? We'll take Monday. Would you raise your hand, please? There are several. Thank you. That's plenty. That's plenty. Several. Tuesday, all right, um, all right, thank you, all right. Wednesday, plenty, Thursday, thank you, Friday, thank you, Saturday, thank you, wait a minute, might need another one Saturday or maybe some of you Tuesdays, can you, all right, Sunday, thank y'all, man, that's, that's a tough Sunday, especially since one of them's Easter, uh, and God will honor that, all right. Now the rest of you, if you did not volunteer, you find out what God, what day. There, there's nobody in here that can't fast. One guy told me, he said, I can't fast. I have hypoglycemia. And I said, what's that? And he said, you have to eat every few hours. I said, I got that too. Everybody's got that. Uh, but even if you got hypoglycemia, I don't care what nobody says. You can still go a while without eating. And it's just like running or lifting weights. You do a little more the next time, a little more the next time. A little more the next time. You'll be healthier. And I'll tell you something else. Your food tastes better when you do eat. Man, man, that's the best, that's the best made or sandwich I ever ate. That's because, you know, you do without for a while. You, you know, if you eat all the time, like cheese, don't even taste like cheese. Uh, so uh, it'll, get to, it'll get its flavor back. All right? Now, we ready? We'll start tomorrow. You do as God leads you. There may be some in here that want to do more than one day a week or more than one day in a row. Uh, we go from tonight till tomorrow night would be 24 hours, but tonight till Tuesday morning would be something like 38 or something like that. I forgot how many hours it is. but um, That's why they call breakfast break fast. You break your fast when you get up and eat breakfast. And, and, I'm, and somebody told me, they said, Danny, you're wrong. You shouldn't tell people that. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. I didn't say it wasn't. I just said I don't eat it till 1230. That's when I eat breakfast. Uh, it may be the most important. But anyway, you do have God leads you. Your work schedule might have a lot to do with that. If you have to go in and work and work all day long, you might need a breakfast and uh, to carry you all day long and stay strong. Okay? All right. Any questions? Any comments? Any testimonies?